Well, Scuba, I am so glad you're here to help us celebrate this special season. Oh, yes, I am so excited. I can tell you're even dressed for the occasion, but I've never seen a seal wearing bunny ears. No, oh, them's not ears. Oh, they're not? No, them's to help me celebrate the special season. Oh, really? Yeah, fishing season. Fishing season? It's not fishing season that we're here to talk about. It's not? No. And why would you wear those during fishing season? Oh, those are my new fishing poles. I just add some string and some worms. <laughs> oh, scuba. No, we're here to talk about Easter. Well, I know about them. There's southeasters and northeasters. Now, then some strong winds. Yes, boy. <laughs> Not wind. We're talking about Easter. What happened 2,000 years ago in history? Were you there? No, I wasn't there. Then how did you know? I know because we have a book that tells the story. You just got a book that's 2,000 years old? Well, no, but it's a copy of a book that was written over 2,000 years ago. And it tells us the story of the very first Easter. And from it, we learn that Easter is not just about Easter bunnies or chocolate or chocolate eggs. Oh, yes, I, I love them. What do you love? I love them chocolate-covered fish eggs. I'm sure you do. Well, we're going to listen to the story right now, okay? Yes, bye. Okay. Hello, boys and girls. I'm really excited to tell you the story of Easter as we find it in God's Word, the Bible. And so as I tell you the story, I'm going to show you different symbols from the story, which represent different parts of the story, which will help you understand what happened over 2,000 years ago in our history. And so our story begins with a donkey. Do you know that the weekend before Easter Sunday is called Palm Sunday? And that's when we remember that Jesus was with his friends, his disciples, and they were coming into Jerusalem. They were walking there. And on the way, he said to two of his friends, I want you to go into this nearby town and there you'll find a donkey tied with its colt. Loose it and bring it to me. And so they did. And when they brought it to Jesus, the disciples, his friends, took their coats and put it over the donkey's back. And Jesus sat on the donkey and rode into Jerusalem on the donkey's back. Now that wasn't unusual for someone to ride on a donkey into Jerusalem. But when the people saw him coming, and there was crowds of people there in Jerusalem at that time to celebrate the Passover, people had come from far away to celebrate in Jerusalem. And then they saw Jesus, they recognized him. He's the one who does the miracles. He made the blind man to see. He had healed the sick, the lame. Not only that, he was a great teacher. He told people about God and heaven. And at that time, the Jews were under Roman rule. They wanted a Jewish king, and they thought that maybe Jesus was coming to set himself up as their king. Now, Jesus is the king of the Jews, but that wasn't his reason for coming at that time. But that's what they celebrated that day as they took their coats off and they laid them down on the pathway for the donkey. And then they took palm branches from those great big high trees and they waved them high in the air and they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. That was on Palm Sunday. But things changed pretty quickly. In fact, one of Jesus' so-called friends, Judas Iscariot, he loved Jesus, but he loved money even more. And Jesus had enemies, and the men that didn't like him were the religious leaders in the temple. They hated Jesus because he claimed to be the Son of God. They didn't think he was. They thought he was a false teacher. They thought he was just Mary and Joseph's son. Jesus was the Son of God. But you know, Judas, 
he went to these people and he asked them, how much will you give me if I turn Jesus over to you? And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver and Judas took the money and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to turn Jesus over to his enemies. Do you know, a couple days later, Jesus and his disciples were all seated around a table and they were eating a Passover meal. The Passover meal the Jews still celebrate today and they remember when they were slaves in Egypt and how God rescued them from being slaves and delivered them from Pharaoh and brought them to their own land. And so while they were celebrating around the table, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks for it and he broke it and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Now it wasn't his body, it was a symbol of his body. But then he took a cup and in that cup was wine and he said, this is my blood which is poured out so that sin can be forgiven. Now it wasn't really blood in the cup but it represented his blood that was going to be poured out so that sin could be forgiven. Sin is anything we think, say, or do that doesn't please God, like telling a lie, disobeying our parents. And the punishment for sin is to be separated from God forever. We all sin. And God didn't want us to take our own punishment. So he sent his only son, Jesus, down to earth, to live a perfect life because he was the son of God. The Bible says in him was no sin so that he could take our punishment. He's the only one who could because he was perfect without sin. And so that's what he was trying to explain to his friends that night as they sat around the table. You know, before they had eaten, he said to Judas Iscariot, what you have to do, go and do quickly. And Judas had left the room he went to find Jesus' enemies. But in the meantime, after Jesus had eaten with his friends, they left the room and they went to the garden. They didn't go to the garden to see the flowers. It was late at night. Jesus often went there to get away from the crowds, but on this particular night, his friends noticed he was very sad. They didn't understand why. But you know, he took his three closest friends, Peter, James, and John, and he said, stay, watch with me. And he went deeper into the garden and he prayed, if it's possible. He was talking to his Father in heaven. Let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but yours be done. He was asking God if there was any other way for the sin of every man and woman and boy and girl to be forgiven without him dying in their place to make it possible. But there was no other way. After three times, he knew there was no other way. And so he came to his friends and he said, get up quickly, my betrayer is coming. Judas was coming into the garden and with him he brought soldiers and a whole crowd of people carrying torches because it was late at night and clubs and they come to take Jesus away. And Judas came right up to Jesus and kissed him on the cheek. And by doing that, he was showing these men, this is the man you're looking for. And Peter wanted to protect Jesus, and he took out his sword, and he cut off the ear of the high priest's servant. And Jesus healed Malchus' ear. And then he said, Peter, put away your sword. Don't you understand? This is what I came to do. I could call ten thousands of angels to my rescue, but Peter, this is what I came to do. And so they took Jesus away, and all his friends disappeared into the night. You know, they took him to the chief priests, and he had no authority to do anything with Jesus. They took him to Pilate, the governor. Pilate asked Jesus all kinds of questions. He listened to those that accused him. But his conclusion was, I find no fault in him. He's done nothing wrong. And then he sent him to King Herod. When King Herod heard that Jesus was going to appear before him, he thought, maybe he'll see a miracle. But Jesus didn't do any miracles. And so he sent him back to Pilate. Pilate had to decide what to do with Jesus. And during that time of the year, 
during the Passover, they always allowed one prisoner to go free. They forgave them or whatever their crime was. So we took Barabbas out of the prison. Barabbas was a murderer and a thief. And he took Jesus out of the prison. And he stood both of them before the people and he said, which one do you want to go free? And they shouted Barabbas. And he said, well, what do I do with Jesus? And they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. In other words, put him to death on the cross. And Pilate said, why, what evil has he done? And they shouted all the more, crucify him. And when Pilate saw that he could not control the crowds, he turned him over to the Roman soldiers. And the Bible tells us that they took a purple robe, a scarlet robe, and they put it on Jesus, just like a king would wear. And they put a reed in his hand, like a scepter. And they put a crown on his head, but the crown was not like a king would wear. It was made out of thorns, and they beat it into his head. They spit in his face. They blindfolded him and punched him and said, If you're really God's son, tell us who hit you. And he said, Nothing. And they mocked him and bowed their knee and said, Hail, King of the Jews. But then they led him away, carrying his cross up a hill called Calvary. And when they got to the top of the hill, those soldiers nailed his hands and feet to that wooden cross. And Jesus cried out, Father, forgive them. They don't understand what they're doing. And then they put that cross into the ground. He wasn't the only one that day. There was one on his right hand and one on his left. These men had done wrong. They were thieves. They had stolen things. They deserved to be punished. We wouldn't think they deserved to die, but they did that day. But Jesus was in the middle. He had done no wrong. In him was no sin. Do you know that one of those thieves, he said, If you're really God's son, why don't you save us? Save yourself and us. But the other thief said, do you understand who you're talking to? We deserve to die, but this man has done no wrong. And Jesus said to that man, today you will be with me in paradise. Because he believed Jesus was dying for him. You know, while he hung on that cross, there was darkness over the face of the earth. In the middle of the day. Because his father in heaven... God had turned his back on Jesus. That's why Jesus called out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you turned your back on me? Because God is holy. He cannot look on sin. And so Jesus hung alone on that cross. And his last words were, It is finished. What he had come to earth to do had been accomplished. He paid the price for sin. And he died. The Bible tells us that Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea, they came and asked Pilate to take his body, and they lovingly wrapped it in linen cloth, and then they took it to a cave where they laid their dead. And a great stone was rolled over the door of that cave. It would have taken many men to move that stone. And that's where they buried their dear friend. They were very sad that night. But you know those religious leaders? They said, they came to Pilate and they said, remember this man, Jesus, he said that he would die and he also said that he'd come back to life. Now they didn't believe that he would because they said, why don't we put soldiers around that tomb because his friends could come at night and with all of them together, they could roll back the stone from the door of the cave and they could take his body out and hide it somewhere and say he was alive. So Pilate said, set a watch and seal the stone. So they did. They had four guards around the clock guarding that stone to make sure it was not moved. And they sealed it with wax to make sure nobody moved it. Well, you know, Easter Sunday morning, the women were coming to the tomb. And they were going to put perfume and ointment on Jesus' body, just like we would put flowers on a grave. They wanted to show their love for him. And you know, as they were coming towards the tomb, they wondered, how are we going to move that stone from the door? It was too big for them to move. It was too heavy. But they didn't have to worry, because the Bible says there was a great earthquake. 
And the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and he rolled back the stone from the door of the cave and he sat on it and he appeared like lightning. And for fear of him, those brave soldiers, they fainted. And when the women came to the tomb, they saw the angel and the angel said, don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified, but he's not here. He's risen like he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. And when they looked inside that tomb, they saw no body. There was only grave clothes there, wrapped as if there was a body in it, but they were empty. And he said, go quickly and tell his friends that he's risen like he said. And they ran to tell his friends, and not all his friends believed. In fact, the Bible tells us that Peter and John, they didn't believe. They had to go look for themselves. And they ran and they found the tomb was empty, just like the women had said. But you know, they were still afraid of those soldiers. They were his followers, and because their friend, their master, their teacher was dead, they thought that they might die too, that their lives were in danger. So they went into a room, a great big room, an upper room, and they locked the door to make sure those soldiers could not get in. And while the doors were locked, that Easter Sunday morning, and they were gathered in that room, the Bible tells us that Jesus appeared in the middle of the room. They thought he was a ghost. He didn't come through the door. He just appeared. But they were afraid, and he said, don't be afraid. It is I. And he reached out his hands and showed them his hands and his feet and his side, the wounds from where he had been nailed to the cross and where the spear had gone through his side. And they were so excited. He was alive. He was with them. He was no longer dead. They were so excited. But one of their friends was not there, Thomas, and they said later, Thomas, we saw Jesus, he's alive. And Thomas says, no, he's not, that's not possible. Yes, Thomas, we saw him, we saw the nail prints in his hands, we saw where the spear went through his side. He ate with us, he talked with us, and Thomas says, no way. Unless I put my fingers in his nail prints and I put my hand in his side, I will not believe. You know, eight days later, they were in the same room and the doors were locked. And Jesus appeared in the middle of the room and he came right over to Thomas and he said, Thomas, reach out your fingers and put them in my nail prints and reach out your hand and put it in my side, but don't doubt Thomas, believe. The Bible tells us that Thomas said, my Lord and my God. He didn't have to feel the nail prints. He didn't have to put his hand in the side. There was Jesus standing right in front of him. He needed no longer any proof. Jesus was alive, just like he said he was. And you know, he was with his friends for 40 more days. They ate together. They went fishing together. They spent time together. The Bible says he was seen by over 500 witnesses. And you know, one day Jesus said, I want you to meet me. I want you to meet me on the mountain. And so they went as Jesus told them to. They gathered there together. And Jesus said, I'm going to leave you. I'm going back to my Father in heaven. And he said, I want you to do something for me. I want you to tell everyone what I've done. How I died on the cross for their sin and I rose from the grave that I'm alive again and all they have to do is put their faith in me. And you know, while he was speaking to them, he disappeared up into the clouds to take his place in heaven as the king of kings. And you know, his friends saw him go back into heaven. That's where he is now. But what a wonderful story we have of Jesus from the Bible, God's Word, the story of how we can have our sins forgiven and know we're going to heaven. Thanks for listening, boys and girls, and I hope you have a very happy Easter.